Jamstack.conf and welcome to this talk, Next.js, What's Possible? My name is Cassidy Williams and I'm a Principal Developer Experience Engineer at Netlify. You can find me at Cassidy on Twitter, on GitHub, on CodePen, what have you, I'll be there. And uh, I am really excited to talk to you about what's possible with Next.js. My role at Netlify is to kind of improve the developer experience of Next.js on Netlify. And so I wanted to show you something really cool. And so I kept asking myself as I was preparing for this talk, what is possible? What's something really cool that I can show people that'll make them just get giddy about Next.js? Now, there's a few things that I do want to talk about in this, just in what is possible. And first of all, it's the Next on Netlify package. The Next on Netlify package is a really cool NPM package that Netlify recently absorbed and is supporting, and we have people working on it full time now. And in that package, you're able to actually use the SSR sides, the uh, server side rendering sides of Next.js that are built in to the framework on Netlify, and we use Netlify functions to be able to actually render those pages, which is really powerful because it kind of lets you use a bit more of the framework than usual. Now, in Next.js 9.5, incremental static regeneration was finally released as a stable feature. It first was announced in Next 9.3, and that was kind of where the Next.js team really started to embrace uh, static sites and being able to render static sites with uh, Next.js, which was really exciting for me. And this incremental static regeneration is a very cool concept because it allows you to create pages that don't necessarily exist. Like you can, you can kind of take concepts from the route from the URL, and you can use that to change something about the page. And, and so it lets you kind of render pages that you haven't necessarily defined. It's, it's a cool concept and it allows for some cool dynamic routing stuff. And then also alongside that, I really like the Next.js head API. And it's one that I don't think a lot of people really look at much because they're just like, okay, cool. You can put stuff in the head of your HTML. That's not anything thrilling, but what if you did something cool with incremental static regeneration, getting something from the URL and using that data to manipulate the head and do something programmatic with the head API, with ISR, again, incremental static regeneration, and, and just kind of combine these all in a fun way with that package. So what is possible? What can we do with Next.js? Well, I'll tell you, we can prank people. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. I'd like to talk to you about pranking people with Next.js because I'm a professional. Okay, so that being said, that's the end of my slides. Let's get into talking about what this means to prank people with Next.js. Now, a few months ago, I pranked people. I used this service where uh, it, I tweeted this thing saying, Netflix announces new comedy tech show hosted by Tina Fey and engineer Cassidy Williams. I really just, I really wanted to mess with people. This wasn't real. If you click on it, it rickrolls you. And it's this whole thing. And it's just like, ah, you were rickrolled. You were rickrolled in 2020. It's, it's a prank, but it's fun. So that being said, I thought this was a really cool service. I wonder if I could build something like that. And also quick side note, my manager, Sarah Drasner fell for this so hard that when I posted it in our Slack channel at work, she ended up tagging our president of the company, our head of marketing, all these different people. Sarah, if you're watching this, you're gullible. Anyway, I wanted to rebuild this, but in Next.js. And so I did. I made, instead of an LA Times version, a Chicago Tribune version. And so in this homepage of my application, and it's at Chicago Tribune, but the O is a zero, dot Netlify dot app. And uh, you can try it right now. And let's just say I'm going to say Cassidy pranks jamstack conf like this. Now I can get this URL and click it and it pranks people. Yeah. And so that's, that's the prank. And so it has Cassidy Pranks Jamstack Comp, not, and then it also updates the title of the page, etc. And the part that I think is particularly fun is if I were to go to a, the card validator, if you ever want to test out your Twitter cards, you can do it like this. If I were to paste this link in there, 
Because I edited the head, we get this icon here, and it also has the title Cassidy Br Pranks Jan Staff Comp here. So it looks fun. It's a nice little prank. How do we build this? How, how do we put this together? So I thought I'd do a little bit of live coding to show you how you could put something like this together for yourself. Now, if you would like to just look at the repo right away, you can go to my GitHub, again, github.com slash Cassidy. Oops, I totally just searched for GitHub. And then uh, when you search for GitHub and then you go to my repos, this is called Next Pranks. And so you can uh, deploy this site yourself and, and edit it as you wish. But anyway, let's talk about how I actually built this. Now I have another Next Starter project where it's really just a very basic hello world sort of application. It has a main and it just says get started by editing pages uh, slash index.js. Now, if I wanted to make a dynamic route like this that does this kind of incremental static regeneration where it pulls up a whole other page, what I'd want to do is I would want to create a new uh, dynamic route. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a folder and I'm going to call it news. And then in news, I'm going to create a new file. Now, this file can be named anything. It doesn't matter because it's just going to be whatever variable the users put in. I just called it article. So you could do article and then .js. And notice I have tiny little square brackets. I don't know if you can see it there. Little square brackets around the JS. That means that it's going to be a variable in there. So we have this. It's a page. Now, if we want someone to actually access this page, what we want to do is we want to have an export default function article like this. And then in that article, we're going to get props. It's going to be the params that we pass in. I'll just do props for now. And then inside of here is where we're going to do all of our logic and, and kind of just put out our actual rendered component. And so for now, I'll just return a div and we'll say, this is a div, not very exciting. Now, if you actually want to do something with this, right now, if we were to load this up, it would truly just be a page that says this is a div, uh, no matter what, no matter what the URL says. If we want to actually use the incremental static regeneration part, here's a few things that we have to add to make it actually work. So first of all, we need to use get static paths. So it's going to be export function get static paths. Now what this does is it says that we're going to get some static paths in our statically rendered website. And uh, what I'll do in here is because we don't actually have paths that are defined, this will be defined by the user. I'll just do paths is an empty array. And then I'm also going to add fallback is true. So that way, if a page doesn't load for whatever reason, the fallback is true. This is all I have to do here, actually. Now I'll do an export function get static props, and this is where we're actually going to be getting stuff from our user. And so we, again, get static paths is telling our site like, hey, these paths aren't defined. These are going to be done via ISR. And then get static props, what we're going to do in here is we're going to get the params from our URL. So we'll get the URL parameters. And then in these URL parameters, we want to return those to the page. And so we'll do props, and then I'll say a title right here. We'll have a title object passed in. And then I'm going to have revalidate is false, because we don't need to refresh the page based on anything. So now I can say let title is equal to params, and actually it would be params.article because we named our page article like that. And that would make us get whatever URL is passed in. So right here, uh, we would get this Cassidy Pranks Jamstack Conf in the URL uh, would be equal to our title right here. And so then when we wanna use that, inside of article, we have uh, one more thing to add before we can actually use it, and that is going to be a fallback. And so I'm going to import use router. And then I'm going to say from next router. And so inside of here, we'll say uh, const router is equal to use router. And then if the router is a fallback, so router dot is fallback, then inside of here, we'll do uh, just the article is loading. So we could uh, return 
a div article loading dot 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 like that. So this is just if the page needs to be rendered in some way that that's how you need to create a fallback page. But otherwise we're going to be getting whatever props come from our URL. And so in our case we could say uh, we're going to get just title from props, props.title, and then the div on the page will have that uh, title from the URL. Now this is not a ton of code, but this is basically all you need to implement ISR in your applications. And so I have just this basic page here, but what if I brought in my next pranks application? I'll show you what that looks like. Now in my next pranks application, it's the exact same thing. We have this uh, function get static paths that returns not much. I added a little helper function that returns things to title case. And so the URL, instead of being cassidy pranks jamstackconf we get spaces in between and we capitalize it and stuff. And so we put it all in title case and then uh, we pass that to the title right here. And then in the article, I have the title and then I added dash not, and then I added an iframe for my YouTube video. I said, whoa, you were pranked so good. And I had a link back to the homepage. And then here, this is the next thing that I really wanna talk about, the prank head. The prank head actually uses the head API and makes it so that way our Twitter cards, our OG images, anything that we put in Slack will actually look a little bit more legit. Now in our prank head, we use uh, the next head API and we're just passing in that title. And what happens when we pass in that title is we apply it to the title first of all, so we get our tab to appear here. But then also we have our open graph title right here and then we also have our Twitter title right here. And then for the rest of these, I added just a little description, see the latest news from the Chicago Tribune, blah, blah, blah. We have all of these programmatically in there so that we have a card that's actually rendered on social media so we can prank people good. Now, there's a few other cool things that you could do that I won't get to in this talk, but let's just say that you wanted to have like an article tagline or description or something. We could add that in the URL. We could add it as some kind of query parameter or something. And then once we do that, we could pass that as, for example, a description in our prank head. And then when we do that, then we can apply that to the OG description. And so it could actually look like a real article description in there. There's, there's so many options here. I think it's particularly cool. So that being said, this is how to prank people with Next.js. And uh, all of these features, yes, I did a very silly thing to be able to show people how to prank people with Next.js. But if you think about the power behind incremental static regeneration, uh, you can think about, let's just say you have some data coming from a CMS, or you know that if you put in this slug, this should query a certain API that you wanna pass in. That's really, really cool because you could say that you want to have probably some some kind of shorter build time, even though it might be a little bit slower for your user, you can actually have all of that data loaded uh, and be a little bit more dynamic with it, which is a really cool way of thinking about it. And it's still jam stacky because it's just an API. It's really neat. Now, one last thing before I let you go away is I added the next on Netlify package. Now, because ISR requires some kind of server stuff to actually uh, build pages and show things, we need to use the next on Netlify package. And so if you ever wanna check it out, you can go to github.com slash Netlify and then next on Netlify. And this is where the package lives. We are updating it all the time and it has some really good support so far. The, the team behind it is great and I'm excited to help them a little bit more uh, as time goes on. Now to install it, it's actually really, really easy. And there's there's just these tiny three steps where what you do is you add in your next config, target serverless. Once you do that, inside of your Netlify toml, you have uh, out functions and out publish. So that way you can publish your site to a separate directory that uh, Next on Netlify uses, and same with your functions here. And then inside of your package.json, you install Next on Netlify and add a post build command. That is it. Those are the three steps to install the package. Once you do that, your ISR stuff should work just fine. And I had a really fun time building this project. I hope you had a fun time listening to me. I've been Cassidy Williams, and I hope that you have a great time at the rest of your Jamstack Conf. Bye.